closer, Rockingham's own Governor Chris Lee. Yeah. I didn't wear my ties, so you don't have to get up. I thought we were going to be out in the tent. And they're all campaigning today. Look, it's great. You guys excited for next week? Yeah. Well, you should be. It's going to be a great day. It is going to be great. Um, and I, again, I, I'm not up here to espouse all the wonderful accolades. Brian did a great job with that. Uh, but one thing, one area where um, I, I, Brian just left a little leeway for me to, to brag about. And, and it's really that also goes in with this concept that I always preach. It's about a team. It is team, team, team. And we've had huge success in the state uh, bringing in new managers, new commissioners, and most importantly, a new attorney general and new judges to the courts. We're really changing the fabric of the state to the middle. The fact that we, for the first time in a long time, we have a conservative Supreme Court who once again helped us this week by letting, making sure the Constitution prevailed and up, upheld SB3, which was yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. But let me tell you something, I'm going to bring someone up here because none of this happens without, without this individual. Uh, and that's Executive Counselor Russell Prescott. Is Russell here? Do you leave? Yeah, Russell, come on up here. Yeah, A governor can nominate anyone he wants, but I need three votes on that Executive Counselor. And Russell's been here every year today. Yeah. Then you just have to grab onto this guy, grab his coattails, and you'll get across the finish line. And it's been the biggest pleasure of my life working with you, Chris. It's been great. Thank you very it's much. I just wanted to say hi. Vote for Russell Prescott. Thank there you. There we go. <laughs> okay, we need him. So the big thing over the next week, a couple things. The race is going to be a lot closer than Democrats think, and the race is going to be a lot closer than Republicans think. And I mean that. People say, oh, Governor. The economy's booming, you've done so much for the state, everyone's happy, you're going to be fine. Boy, do I get nervous when I hear that. That says complacency, right? Take nothing for granted. God bless Ray Burton, old executive counsel from District 1, but he said something all the time and he was so right. You have to run like you're three votes behind every single day. Every day you have to run like you're three votes behind. So we got to get out there. We have six, seven days to really close this deal. And anything can happen in the last week of an election. Just look at what has happened in both recent and, and distant history. Anything can happen. So those, those that want it more, those that work harder, will win. It's just that simple. And we have great senators and great legislators to work with. We have Senator, is Senator in, Dan? Is Dan here? Was yeah. Dan in? Yes, he is. Well, Dan's here. I know John Reagan was here. We got to get behind these guys. We have reps from all over uh, the, the county and the district here. Uh, I see Al, my good friend Al Baldessaro is here. The only guy I know that can pull off the pink socks. Al bless it Al, don't think I didn't notice. But this is the team that got stuff done. You want to talk about constitutional carry or the regulatory reform that we've done? You want to talk about all the, 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 the voter bills, right? That came that started with the president all the way down, got it done in the legislature, got it done in the Senate, got it to my desk and we're able to sign it and move forward. These are fundamental changes we have made all for the better. Getting back to that live for your die thing. But at the end of the day, the Democrats are so far left right now. They are so far wacky, yeah. right? It isn't even conservative, typical conservative New Hampshire Democrat policies they're espousing. They're going so far left with what they want to do. They are promising not just to pass their agenda, but to undo ours. That they're, in fact, they're more hell bent. Excuse me, mom. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, but they are more bent on undoing us than passing their own agenda because they have no agenda. I mean, for goodness sakes, Molly Kelly is a disaster. We all know that. She doesn't have a single idea. It'd be one thing if they actually had ideas. Well, we want to go in this direction, in this direction, in this direction. They don't even have ideas. All, all, they, are, all they are is the anti. They, they are the negative, right? They expose all the ugliness and the negativity, and that's exactly what people are tired of in politics. They want to believe in something. And I say it all the time, to the independents out there, to the Republicans, to the conservative Democrats who I know we can get drawn over, and I just, it's very simple. Either you're gonna listen to the negative political rhetoric, or just look at our results. Just look at the results and tell us where we haven't made the system better in the last two years. Now, everyone in this room gets it, you're here, right? You've all written checks to be here. Jim Boyle, your check wasn't nearly big enough. No. <laughs> You cheap bugger. You live in a $2 million house across the street and you wrote a $25 check. <laughs> I'm going to call you out every time. And everyone that 
right, Chuck, you can all double it, you know it. Look, the money, money is the mother's milk of politics because it, it's about a product. We've got a great product. You can have the best product in the world, but if you don't have the money and the backing to advertise it, to go sell it, to make sure people believe in it. And again, we're not selling a false bill of goods. We're selling real results, tangible results. But at the end of the day, take nothing for granted. All of these races are going to be close. And there's an old, an old guy here that got known for yelling, talk, talk, talk. Talk, talk, talk. We know that guy. And he's absolutely right. My father went across the state 2009, 2010. Talk, talk, talk. Which means grab your coworkers and your family members and your dogs and your cats. I don't care who you got to grab. Bring them all to the polls with you. At the end of the day, everyone has to be engaged. A little different. I say knock, knock, knock. Right? Pick up a phone. There's 100 people in this room right now. We all know five people that might maybe Republican or Democrat or Independent that we know are probably not likely to vote. And if we each pick up the phone to five people, that's 500 votes. Believe you me, that could be the difference between my race or Eddie's race or Dan's race or any of our races. Five phone calls. I mean, it takes probably 20 minutes out of each of our time. Okay, now if we're really excited, and as we should do, do that every night over. That's 3,000 votes in the next week. That truly is the difference between this race, right? Don't take anything for granted. We need, we're, we're going fast. Put your foot on the gas and go faster. We know you're working hard. I need you to work even harder. You're given 10 hours a day on the phones. I need 12. I mean, really, I mean it. This will be the difference between the blue wave being real or the blue wave being defined as a tidy bolt swirl going down the toilet for the Democrats because that's where it's going. We get up and we talk about results. We talk about what we've done for our states and talk about how we put in individuals first. Right? It's not about institutions anymore. It's really about focusing on individuals. You know, the example I'm going to give is, I'm looking at Al. Al and I fought very hard for right to work. We fought so hard for it. We came up a little bit short. That was a tough one. At the end of the day, who are the public unions supporting? Who are the firefighters and law enforcement and state police? They're supporting Republicans. They've gotten behind us because they said, you know what? We might not have agreed on that one issue, but you helped us with all these other areas. And you stand by law enforcement and you believe in justice, right? And to have those folks who stand up for our communities now standing behind Republicans for the first time in a long time means something. Because we get it done. We don't let a little bump in the road get in our way. We keep fighting. And we don't stop fighting until we get there. So with that attitude, I love that everybody's here, but there's a lot of work to do. There's still a lot of work to do. Because just like we're here, the Democrats are somewhere else, in a basement somewhere probably, right? But, and with a bunch of out of -staters. But they're coordinating too, right? The Soros money is here. I got Cory Booker coming in. I got Elizabeth Warren coming in, right? Everybody, they're all Bloomberg, good Lord, right? They're all trying to buy their way into 2020, and that already started. So let's not fool ourselves about it. Get aggressive about it. Reach out. Think hard on the way home. First stop, just think hard of those five to ten people that you can call. Then make the calls. That's it. And it's all about getting out the vote on Tuesday. We keep fighting hard. The red wave is coming. It is a red tide that the Democrats won't expect, and it makes the win that much sweeter. Thank you guys very much. Keep working hard. All the candidates up and down the ballot. We're going to close the thing on you. So uh, since the governor opened the door, um, I'm going to walk through it. Um, 